Oh my god. Hi everybody. Is it StreamYard or is it normal? No, it's normal. Hi everyone, how are you? Oh, oh. 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 hello. Down a bit. We're in Gordon the Gopher's um, cupboard. How are you all? Sorry, we're a bit delayed there because we're trying to work out the lights because the kids suddenly came into the kitchen. Yeah. So we needed to come upstairs. Um, you're, you're I'm right. a bit behind on what we're going to be talking about today. I think a number of people have seen Hannah's yeah. post as well. So maybe do you want to... I'm going to be a bit behind on what we're talking about today because I've been um, with Hannah at the Marsden. Um, I'm going to do a post on uh, Instagram later because apart from anything else, um, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm furious. I'm, t I'm so so angry um it was all, all i can say was utterly devastating and all of us were thinking today all the group of women were a group of friends were all together we were thinking how many women were told this today as well and today mm, mm. as we were walking out of the marsden hannah turned to us she goes do you know it was 11 years today that I was first diagnosed wow don't you think that just gets me goosebumps again wow um, so you're going to be talking about this in more detail on on Instagram, yeah? Is that right? Well, I don't know about saying? detail, but I'm no. just going to I'm going to do a post. I I just she wants me to do a post because she is processing, but we have to keep up the campaign because so she's asked me to do something. So I'm going to have a think about what I can do because we're hearing some rumours that if the if they turn out to be true. I think it's scandalous. I think it's a scandal. So, I, so I've got to work out that I don't say that yet because I don't know if it's true, but we are going to hopefully find out very soon. Yeah. And the good thing is we have a an MP who seems to be upset about this as well, who we will be seeing in Parliament. So we're going to Westminster on Monday and we are good. not going to stop. So Mark will again put the... Um, the link for the, the petition... Link beneath this once uh, once we've uploaded yeah so yeah. if you could sign and share for, to anyone that you think might not have signed yet that'd be amazing lots of lovely comments coming in uh julie if your screen is blank you need to refresh everything's everything's running smoothly i'm afraid sorry and i should probably just quickly say for anybody that doesn't know my friend hannah yes. doesn't know the situation what the hell we're talking about is my friend my friend hannah has secondary metastatic uh, cancer mm. so her breast cancer is in her liver and in her lungs um and there is a drug we were sat there today when the consultant said the next drug for you is in her too but as we all know she can't have it so yeah so that's what we were talking about could we be looking at something of an erin brockovich type scenario here where um you know oh. revealing the kind of the machinations of big pharma and the nhs um well i'll tell you one thing they've messed with the wrong group of friends that's what that's I'm for saying. sure that's for sure they've climbed them they've climbed the himalayas no less mm. so don't mess with them um good evening to everyone hi to everyone who's in the room absolutely Ned, as nadia's explaining this is her dear friend hannah um who had some sort of bad news today devastating and, yeah, news. Yeah, Pro yeah. progression on all her tumors yeah. in her liver and so she's been taken off the medication today so yeah and there's a drug just over in Scotland, that she could have next. It always strikes Not me as strange that if, if, if you... Because presumably, you know, you go in for regular updates and, and like many things in life, things can get sort of worse one minute and then better the next, that there's no... It, is, it, is it like the first moment things progress? It's, you are, you're off that drug. It's not like, well, let's see what happens next month. It could come no, down again. No. Wow. Off the drug. That's brutal, yeah, isn't it? It's very brutal. scary. Very, very scary for cancer. Yeah. I mean, every day I find out something new about cancer patients. We have so many fixed ideas about what cancer is. Mm. One of the big problems for my friends, like Lizzie as well, who is in, you know, has got it's all in her bones and everything, they sit there looking a million dollars. Mm. So people don't think it's an urgent situation. Mm. Like, it's it's... We all had that idea, didn't we? That yes. somebody that's very ill with cancer looks a very certain way. Well, that's yeah. not the case. Um, yeah, okay. Well, um, I just want to say thank you, Cathy Brady Lyon. Very, very kind words, sweet words. Uh, okay, what are we going to be talking about tonight? We're going to talk about, yesterday, obviously, we did a lunchtime sort of special, silly, sort of light, frothy kind of stories. Uh, but today, we want to talk about the Diane Abbott, uh, the Tory donor, conservative donor who uh, I will read out his racist, sexist and hate-filled uh, description of her. 
um, and we're going to talk about the kind of gyrations that have happened in government from um, it's not racist to it is racist, but he's not a racist. No, he, no, he just said something racist, he just but said he's something, not exactly. racist. But can you be a racist if you say sorry for something that's racist? And, and we're going to talk about other details that have developed today, which I'm absolutely outraged by regarding Diane Abbott herself. Um, we're also going to be talking about briefly about, I mean, there's not much more detail on this story than there was this morning, because obviously it's an ongoing investigation. But it just, this story just is just a hideous, hideous prospect. This is the funeral director's story uh, in Hull, where um, a funeral director has been sort of been put on lockdown as it's beginning to emerge that there are questions over the storage of bodies and the identity of bodies buried, ashes given, etc., which of course is just going to be so traumatic for the family. So I'm going to briefly talk about that. Um, and I also want to speak about the uh, the uh, motion that's been passed uh, in the US Senate regarding a possible, you're not going to believe this, they're possibly going to ban TikTok in America. And if they it do it in America... It should be very interesting because one, one of our daughters said yesterday, I'm seriously thinking about coming off TikTok for good. Mm. And she was saying there's actually more and more people saying that now because it's so addictive. Well, well, yeah, I mean, that's not why they're banning it in America. No, but, but I mean, yeah. there could be a good knock-on effect. Right, so TikTok could be banned. And, of course, the question is, could there be a knock-on effect to uh, the UK? There are many implications for this, least of all the fact that, as we, we'll talk about it when we get to it, but the idea that freedom of speech is one, but also um, lots of businesses are run on TikTok. Mm. So this is this is quite big news. Mm. Um, I don't know anything about this story yet, because, as I say, I've just just come in from mm. the whole day at Marsden and and so mm. I'm I'm so I'm I'm a viewer mark wow. I'm okay. listening to you and okay. um, and I'm messaging you okay well there we go <laughs> Uh, okay, well, let's talk about let's talk about the Diane Abbott story. Uh, for anyone who's not in this country or from abroad, this is a a, a former Labour MP who is now an independent a MP um, due to uh, a, a, you know suggested contentious comments that she made about uh, prejudice experienced by Jewish people versus Black people. Um, she she had she was basically let go by the Labour Party, but she, so she's an independent. She represents Hackney North, I think it is. Um, and she, and basically a Conservative donor, someone who pays a lot of money, £10 million he's paid recently to the uh, Conservative Party, uh, in a recent meeting at his Leeds headquarters, Frank Hester uh, said this. Um, in a Leeds meeting, who was there? Was it his? It was his company. Just, just his company members? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't Meet, anyway. a, me a meeting of his, Le his Leeds company headquarters. And this was leaked, or this was published, this was released to the papers that he said this. It's like trying not to be racist, but you see Diane Abbott on the TV and you're just like, you just want to hate all black women because oh she's there. And I don't hate all black women at all, but I think she should be shot. OK, so, so he said that. Um, it's like I said to Mark, if he says that in a meeting, what does he say behind closed doors? Well, that I Petrifying. think is the biggest, that is the biggest thing. And it's been, this, yeah, this has been, um, uh, was, Okay, I just want to pull this person up, Rob G. We Rob G. Weston. I cannot abide Diane Abbott, never have liked her, mainly because she is, that's the nice way to put it, incompetent. She hasn't got a clue and lies when she doesn't do her homework. But it doesn't merit this kind of language, right? I mean, I mean I'm presuming... Yeah, what do you think about the the way that this man talked about all yeah. of those all of those points yeah you cannot you know, like her opinions say, or politics but 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 what do you think of the way that he spoke about her yeah. because i because really the government i mean now now they have reversed haven't they but they really do have played footsie around this haven't they yeah since he since it came to light yeah like dodged around the question whether it's racist or whether it's not and let's not forget sexist as well. Yeah, and he's made other comments about Indians travelling on top of trains in this country. He's made other comments about Asians. So, and so this story, now, he's apologised. He's apologised for his language. But what happened yesterday Has was... Has he just said, like, for his language? What yes, he yeah, he said yeah. He, he made, he, you know, he, and he's not a racist. He said, I'm sorry, uh, you know, I didn't mean to cause offence, but I'm not a racist. And Only the, a racist could think that's not racist. Well, that's it. It's like when someone <laughs> says, I'm not a racist, but... It's like, uh, <laughs> the but, it's all in the but, isn't it, rather than... I'd like him to be a, a, a black woman for a day, just so he could hear that come back at him, yeah. her, yeah, <laughs> and absolutely. just see... If it might feel a little bit 
racist. But the most the most staggering part of all of this is that Rishi Sunak then came out yesterday. We oh, had the unedifying uh, sight of minister after minister after minister being trotted out onto the radio stations, into TV stations, and all they kept saying was what he. It was like the the other guy last week. Who was it who said whatever he said? Oh God, Lee Lee, Lee Anderson. Anderson. Uh, and so everyone said it's wrong. What he said was wrong, but it's he's not a racist. Or they keep saying what he said was racist, but he's not. A racist. Right, okay, let's just pause on that for a second, okay? I do think sometimes people can make mistakes and say things that are racist that they wouldn't have realised would take offence, right. okay? But this, there is no grey area. No, and, and to be, to full credit to Kemi Badenoch, Badenoch, she came out and said it's racist. I mean, again, they haven't wanted to say he's a racist, and this seems to be where... Everything is sticking. Look, news story just breaking. It's been recorded that Diane... Well, we're going to talk about Diane Abbott in the House of Commons today because there was Prime Minister's questions. Keir Starmer, haven't got a lot of time for him anymore, but characteristically, he, he went for Rishi Sunak. Once again, I mean, although Rishi is a hopeless, hopeless Prime Minister who has zero uh, kudos, credibility or principles, who keeps kind of manufacturing this idea, which he did in the House of Commons today, of saying, look at our parliament, look at our government, look at our cabinet, if you want diversity, if you want... Yeah. Now, we've talked about this before. Diversity is different to representation because what you've got is you might have a diverse sort of colour of people in the government, but the values do not represent many of those communities from which they come. And so diversity is one thing and representation is something completely different. And I think this speaks to how you might have diversity, but the fact that no one can call him a racist uh, shows that they don't have any representation of people in the real world. If I was a black woman now, I would feel so sensationally unsafe and unsupported and uncared for by this country. But, well, well, exactly. I mean, I mean, I mean it, 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 they are so slow to, to... And, you know, this awful thing of pushing one um, MP after another out to, to, to stumble over a whole light, load of really embarrassing, like, carefully stroke not carefully thought out statements it's just embarrassment on embarrassment on embarrassment and it's let there's no bones about it it's dangerous what he said is dangerous all you need is a couple of lunatics exactly to take that as some mm. sort of call to Fox. action yeah. You know, we've had MPs killed here before, you know, and by, by the loon, loony, loony extreme. Fruit. Now, two things I want to flag up. Tomorrow, um, what's his face? Oh, my God. What's the name of the strange little guy who who competed against Boris Johnson? Oh, my God. Michael Gove. I thought you were Michael, saying it Rishi. Rishi said no, like Michael Gove is going to announce tomorrow. I'm sure we're going to be talking about it on, on Coffee Money. They're going to announce their new definition of extremism. Oh, well, hang on. Oh, they're in the, they're in government. Hang on a minute. Would this comment, as Andrew Marr was saying on on his show tonight, would this comment fall foul? Will it be will it fall foul of extremist language? Be interesting to see if this these comments I, I think, could be passed through the I, filter of whatever extremism yeah. definition they are. Uh, just all building hate, ruling by divine. Anything now that's going to come out about extremism is going to be about whipping up hate again. And they do nothing to calm anything. And Rishi Sunak was very fast to sit on camera, wasn't he, from his, from from Downing Street? Because he's got to have at least one moment in the sun where he sat at the table and he's he's addressed the nation, where he he dared to talk about mob rule and hate marches. Um, let's just pause for a minute. Mob rule. She should be shot with a gun. Racist and sexist makes me hate all black... Hang on a minute. This is the language that generates mob rule. This is the language that generates extremism and violence and aggression. I can't believe they can't see it. And I tell you, this speaks to something else that I'm getting so, so worried about with all news at the moment. They all paddle for time. They wait for uh, the intensity of the news story to fade and then we move on. Nothing is changing. You said it as you walked in today. It's like they allow it to just run its course. They, they well, I, I, said, I said, I'm starting to get really scared now because it feels like they're doing a lot of in plain sight 
really outrageous things. Me tube there reminding us about Suella Braverman and the horrific yeah. things yeah, yeah, that yeah, she yeah. said and inciting her to the point where the where the commissioner of the poli Met police had to go against her, right? And I said, it feels like we're moving to an era of complete fascism where <laughs> they just keep saying anything, knowing that people will just sit and go, well, there's nothing we can do. And it will blow over until the next thing. That's why it was so important that Boris got called out when he was, when he was caught telling a lie, misleading the house. And everyone, you know, not everyone, so many people are, oh, for God's sake, all politicians lie, which many politicians will lie. But when you allow things like this to happen in plain sight, it's it's that, a new it's the dawn of a new era. Yeah, allowing it to happen in plain sight is yeah. one thing, but actually managing to try and gaslight everyone and and adjust the actual meaning yeah. of language. Never before would I think that the word ceasefire or calling for peace could somehow be a, 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 an, stop an the act, genocide, an act of people, violence. People to, to call, have been arrested. I mean, for saying stop. The you know, we are in a land of total total insanity, and there's no sign that it's getting going to get less or get or, or get better. Finally, on the dynamic story so of course in prime minister's questions they had 35 I minutes in the house happen. of commons you know keir starmer whack 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 uh, rishi sunak says nothing P pads 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 it, prime minister's questions is a pointless waste of fucking space and time it's egos just battling around Pure in there and rishi, I can't, I, I can't bear, bear the, the pair of them guess who tried to stand up and ask a question Wait for this 40 times she stood up she bobbed it's called bobbing. bobbing if you bob during prime minister's question time you're trying to get the speaker of the house that absolute excuse for a fucking leader of the house lindsay Hoyle, who didn't allow the ceasefire vote to pro properly happen he did not allow her about whom the story was to, to talk speak. to speak and he was the same speaker who fudged and bollocks the entire vote on the ceasefire because he allegedly was worried about the welfare of MPs. Oh, hang on a minute. Well, Apart a from if it's a black woman. Uh, he, 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 I mean, he just, I mean, with, oh. the, with that behaviour today, because I felt sorry for him when he came out and said, and I really no, I believed did. him. I, and yeah, now I, I think, humanity to how it. can you have not allowed her to speak when you're saying that you fear for, for MP safety? How could she not be allowed to speak? We hear all the time how horrendous it is for, men, for women in Westminster, and it was shown to us today. She couldn't stand up mm. and speak up for herself after everything's been said. I mean, it's been a non-stop conversation across the country, hasn't it? But Prime Minister's question time was about it. it she was the woman about whom this was said. <laughs> 40 times. I mean, I didn't she's see it. Up. Mark told me when I came in, I, I, I still didn't quite believe it. I'm still wondering whether you missed a bit. And she did actually speak somewhere else. Absolutely. Have we missed a bit? Staggering. Okay, you were I, asked by somebody, didn't you, to... to yeah, Reese Roberts wanted to send this because he couldn't be here live. Um, He's one uh, of our regular followers. Yeah, and Reese said, what Frank Hester said about Diane Abbott and black women at large is racist, critically springboarding off the verbal intention to disparagingly group all black women together in the vein of his clear hate for Diane. For him to round it off with she should be shot, he can oh, clearly feel comfortable say saying such a grotesque thing based on the familiarity of images and stories that he's seen in society of black people being hurt and killed with disposition and with little to no regard for their livelihood, often accompanied with twisted validation for why black victims deserve that extreme oh, punishment. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm having to, uh, I'm just kind of paraphrasing. Uh, one of the other things that uh, he, he always wants, also wants to say, Reese, uh, when it comes to racist and downright hateful remarks, one thing that deeply frustrates me is that within my community, the black community, we often find ways to excuse this rhetoric mm. in support of comforting white people's feelings mm. or wanting to maintain certain but, relationships right. too and within that community because it's often up for discussion and nuance. We continually enable horrendous ways of being disrespected, whereas in other communities, for, for example, anti-Semitism or even Asian hate, unilaterally across the board, a remark of this ill intent made public in the media is usually denounced in a unified manner. Though I have to say, the Islamophobic comments uh, recently weren't. Which is yeah. Not, not a single Tory MP that yeah. I heard, and I think I heard three different ones on yeah. the radio, maybe there were others, would say that it was Islamoph Islamophobic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Reese, thank you. Reese, you're paraphrased. very upset by yeah, this. Yeah. And you're, like you say, you know, it, 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 it's just deeply personal, isn't it? It's wounding to hear somebody talk like this. Lindsay Hoyle needs to walk. 
It's an absolute How outrage. How could he not let his her speak father, up for His father, as the founder also of the Friends of Israel, that he, and, he did, and he didn't allow a free proper vote on he's the ceasefire. It, that is jaundiced. It's, it's, he's not in the right position. He has a vested interest on one side. And for him, to, and for him to absolutely actually say, all he said was there wasn't enough time. Zero well, was humanity it, was that, occupation. Was that the reason he gave? What? There wasn't enough time. Wasn't for enough it. time. And what what greatly important things were said well, in that time? Well, there was a question about rugby straight after. Wow. Wasn't enough time. Because he wanted and to you follow, know, follow whatever protocol. Whatever you think of Diane mm. professionally, yeah. right, she's a, she a long-serving, yeah. hard-working... She's put up with so much abuse over the years and she is not afforded the respect to speak for herself when this has all been and even about it, her even for more days. detailed is this. Lindsay Hoyle saw fit the Speaker of the House to shift protocol over the ceasefire vote. Yeah. Because he was worried but about the welfare. But he couldn't move the rugby question off the fucking agenda. Oh my God, I can't believe it. It is an and absolute gonna, outrage. This country surely, is shit. But surely um, um, Keir Starmer... Is gonna, wouldn't well, he? Well, Keir Starmer's in a tricky situation because he got rid. He, he got rid of. Well, what do you think's going on? It's the Israel lobby. Sorry, guys. It's yeah. plain and simple as That's that. That's what I meant. Yeah. Um, God, it's well, it's just Diana, so depressing. Abbott, we Poor are Diana so Abbott. sorry, yeah. and and for all the horrid things that are being said, there are so many people that are disgusted and outraged, and within the black community, believe me, it will feel like. Everybody's against you when something like this is said, but it is not the case. I there want to are read what... so many outraged on your behalf. Faith Goodman, really good point. I feel so bad about Diane Abbott as she was sent out of the Labour Party. Yes, get out, behave yourself, for saying that racism could be worse or might be worse than anti-Semitic um, anti-Semitism. But if she was having this vile stuff said to her about her, I understand her views exactly. exactly. She's been on the receiving end, and her point Poor was thing. that was, the, and her point that she was trying to make was there is often, not always, less visibility in terms of, wa of what's course. worn and of the course. appearance of a Jewish person versus a black person. Of course, I mean, that is a statement of fact. And she was thrown out. Oh, because the because the Labour Party are running scared from Benjamin Netanyahu. Oh. It's, it's just a shit show. Anyway, uh, moving on. So the funeral directors, this is the story of the police raiding... Bit, uh, sorry. Uh, no, just the police The police raiding three funeral businesses last week over a concern for the care of the deceased. This is in Humberside. Two people have been arrested. Some of the stories that I heard on the radio this morning uh, were about uh, one woman uh, was uh, kissed the coffin within which she believed her relative were, was in, and she felt, sensed, perhaps the sound, if she'd knocked it slightly, she sensed or felt that he wasn't in there. It looks like he wasn't. Um, other people have been, uh, they found the body of another deceased relative uh, stuffed in a freezer, um, and the family of the body found Imagine. in the freezer had already been given ashes, presumably of someone else oh, no, um so families it's are in a awful. distraught distraught it's state it's so awful yeah it, it's just it's just beyond and the police are being really sensitive in their language they're saying this is a truly horrific incident um you know families are understandably distraught it's extremely complex and sensitive um you know many will be shocked horrified and re-traumatized re through the grief following the disclosure of facts in this case. And this, this is a, a sort of developing story. He said that between Friday and Sunday, 35 bodies were recovered and respectfully transported to the mortuary in a hull and formal identification is taking place. You're gonna to have to go re-go through the process of identifying your departed dear ones, which is just And you, you an know, I've really, thing. really like, through watching the live stream genocide in Gaza, watching that need for people mm. to go and get the bodies, like they're doing that in such extreme danger because it is a primal need in human beings mm. to show that last moment of respect 
for their loved ones. And I've really, really, se I think it's really dropped into me having watched those mm. videos. I think mm. I've got even more sense of it than if I was just reading. It's, mm. it's, it's horrific. But to see that primal need, people <coughs> would risk being shot to get mm. that book is so important. So this is like no small thing. This no, it's will, no small thing. This will be hitting people so hard, won't it? Mm. What what's what's happened? And like you said, there's a good word, re traumatized. It must be almost like the death again. Because uh, there's it, closure with a funeral, isn't there? Yeah. Not for everyone. And apparently there is absolutely but, no system or body that monitors or kind of, you know, uh, regulates well, we had this before. regulates funeral directors. Do, do you the, remember before there was a story, somebody here will remember this, there was a story like this before, and I don't know whether it was in the pandemic, and then there was a whole thing about how that we need a regulatory, I can't say that word, regulatory body to check and, you know... Mm. But maybe that just never happened then. No, no, I think that was regulation over the cost of funerals. No, 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 was no. It, not, it, was uh, it was something else something where like... bodies were not being treated. Anna, Mar Anna Marie Shellard, this is really moving. My daughter came into my room last night and said, we're not even safe when we're dead, Mum. This oh. is just horrendous. And my thoughts are with the families oh, affected. Bless her. Vic Victoria Moore says, this doesn't surprise me. I worked in a care home for years and some of the funeral directors' companies are awful. There's a there is a brisk sort of brazen just efficiency or lack of efficiency. Someone's just asked what on earth could have been in it for the company. I can only imagine that what was in it for the company was uh, that not in not having to spend the money on disposing of the I bodies. Think, I, I think mean, probably what it was was using uh, maybe staff that weren't because you have to you have to this is training, isn't it? So maybe cheaper staff and just like not properly supervising, just lazy. Oh my god, look at this work. story. Sorry, sorry to cut across. Neve says my local hospital have also released the wrong bodies to families. Oh. Someone I know a few weeks back had a call saying her dad was ready for collection, but she buried him oh. a few months earlier. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is a this is a potentially massive scandal massive scandal so we don't have all the details it is a developing story i mean god only knows what the economic motivator if it was economic or just total incompetence um that's right it seems strange that there isn't some way of as you say regulating this in any way does anyone else remember that story i'm starting to wonder now if it was a drama that i watched well i saw someone here's just ha definitely... hannah liebschutz mentions it reminds me of the david fuller story which is also horrific these stories are the ultimate robbing of dignity as no one can protect people in the most vulnerable state when they cannot fight back. I don't know. If, mm. Yeah. Uh, Siobhan Jordan, not a stupid question. How was, the, how was it discovered? I think it was members, it was family relatives becoming suspicious. I think it may well have been. Well, wasn't it the woman going to yeah. the... To, you said yeah, the, the coffin. Yeah, 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 the one who, who did, felt that there was nobody in the coffin and there wasn't. Uh, and then that sort of, you know, like a... Literally a can of worms. Um, so, uh, just finally, just briefly before we f finish... Uh, TikTok could be banned in the US. It could eventually be banned here. Massive vote in favour of this. This is legislation because there's a worry. I forget the name of the bill that they brought before the House. But essentially, this is because the American government are worried that because China owns TikTok, that the amount of information and data they're getting on American citizens could leave the country vulnerable. Isn't it too late? Um, it could be, it could well be too late. Uh, the vote was 352 to 65. Some of those who voted against the bill are obviously coming from the perspective of... Business. Uh, free, well, free speech. And, yeah, you know, we're a democracy. We're allowed to... Oh, we're alone and baloney. Yeah, Does anyone do. really believe we've got free speech or yeah. democracy? Whereas, actually, those who are in favour of, of banning TikTok say, Communist China. We're back to the days of using this sort of thing. Communist China is America's largest geopolitical foe and is using technology to actively undermine America's economy and security. Do you know what China really are guilty of? Most? Yes, actually, it's always too late. Do you know what? They, but do you know what China are mostly guilty of? Of course, every country is guilty of kind of human rights abuses. China's guilty of doing what America's done a little bit more recently, which has turned their economy into a bit of a success. This is why America don't like China. Again, as Edward Bevington said, there, Temu is the most invasive app. What is going on with that Temu? What is Temu? I agree. What is Temu? It's the shopping app where you can get everything you've ever wanted for about half the price. You know, what? things oh, like China. things like organizing organizing things for your for your drawers and things like that. That would you think? God, I, yeah. this is going to cost me twenty five quid to put yeah. my socks in place. Well, Temu's doing it for seven, but they say 
say it's so that they can get millions right. of people all tied in with all their data and all their information uh, and then the prices are going to go up right yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and god knows where all the stuff is made and what the situation is for the people working mm. in the factories we just don't know so yeah, yeah you're right temu <laughs> we've all got our eye on temu going oh my god do not touch so temu wrong. says siobhan jordan do not yeah. touch um just quickly want to read just going back to the, the funeral directors Gerard Le Film says, this makes me appreciate the Irish wake where the deceased is w waked in the house for two to three days with an open coffin. Mm. Family and friends sit with exactly. the body all day. You're absolutely right. That's it. This is what I say. We need to go back to old fashioned mm. funerals. Like yeah. That's how it is Buried where my dad's garden. from. Um, people now more and more are, 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 are taking on their own funerals. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, and there we go. So we're, we're going to sum so up much, there. Guys. Yeah, thanks, guys. Sorry I'm for our gonna, sort of I'm fury just... because it's just, I, I'm sorry. What we are being uh, forced to accept it's outrageous. is astonishing. Read the but, Diane Abbott and everything. Diane Abbott, yeah. bless her. And a family. I mean, she's yeah. got kids as well. Can you imagine what that's like hearing that about your mum? Yeah. Yeah. Publicly like just, that. Just all, Natasha turned us quickly. Temu is like the stranger with the sweets that we're all told not to talk to. It's bad. Uh, and just finally, as we sign off, America have decided who their two possible candidates for presidency are, and it is oh, Trump so bad, and so it bad, is bad. Biden. So there we go. Shame on you. Interesting America. fact: if Biden wins at the end of his next term, he'll be eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. I, mean, I can't even get my head around that. Okay, guys. So we'll see you tomorrow, and I'm going to be doing a bit of a Gaza update because, of course. Um, we haven't talked about that for a while. So have a good evening. Oh, and there's an agony aunt and uncle landing later tonight.